Today I have a guide on how you guys can control the recoil in Warzone 2 much, much better. All the tips stated in today's video are what all the pro streamers and YouTubers use to actually get really, really high kill games by having an immaculate shot. And all the tips also help with any gun you guys use. It's not only one specific gun. So whatever gun you guys pick up off the ground, you're going to instantly start beaming with it. So with that being said, if you guys do enjoy today's video and learn something new, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna hop over into multiplayer to explain how recoil works and how you guys can control it perfectly. I have a controller cam to the right so you guys can see everything I'm doing on my controller to actually apply the recoil control. So with that being said, let's go straight into the guide. I'm gonna use this black surface to show you guys exactly how recoil actually works and then how you guys can control it. Standing from this block, I'm just going to shoot and not do anything. If you guys look on the right controller, I'm not doing anything with my joysticks. I'm just shooting and letting the gun do all the work. As you guys can see, the bullets go right up to the very top of the wall. Some even go over the wall, basically showing that the MP5 does indeed have quite a bit of recoil. Now I'm going to shoot while actually holding down on the right joystick. And as you guys can see, it's going to be a lot more controlled. It's not going to go straight all the way up. You guys can see that's a much more compact bullet spread versus the one on the left. And that's literally all there is to actually controlling recoil with your controller. You guys might not have seen my joystick move that much. And that's because my dead zone right now is actually pretty low and my ADS sense is pretty high. So I don't have to actually pull down that much. Needless to say, the higher your sensitivity is, the less you have to pull down. The slower your sensitivity is, the more you have to pull down. Keep in mind that every gun has a different kind of recoil pattern. So right now we have the SO14. This one is quite bouncy as well. Goes right up the wall if I don't apply any recoil control. And now if I actually apply some recoil control, you guys can see in the right joystick, now it's actually moving. It's a lot more visible because the SO14 has much more recoil than the MP5. So it actually takes more to control it. But the M13 has a whole lot less bounce. So it's a lot easier to control this, especially at close range. But one thing you guys have to keep in mind is the fact that Warzone 2 actually just has like no recoil. Most of the guns are automatically just extremely easy to control, especially guns like the M13, the Vaznev, the MP5, the MX9. I mean, these guns just have like literally no recoil off the ground. But another huge factor in this is actually your aim assist. Aim assist is extremely broken in Warzone 2. So if you actually know how to control recoil and abuse aim assist, you're basically just not gonna miss any shots. I actually already have an aim assist video on how you guys can abuse that. So if you guys do want to check that one out, I'll leave a link in the description. Combining the knowledge from that video with this video is going to make you an absolute god. Now with that being said, I'm going to go over some of my settings that I recommend you guys use if you guys do want to try to improve your aim and recoil control. And the first thing I recommend for you guys is switching your aim assist type to Black Ops. This is actually really, really important. This aim assist setting has been extremely broken since Warzone 2 dropped. So if you guys aren't using this right now, I really recommend it. It's probably the one thing that's making your aim like not very good. So if you guys don't have this on, make sure you guys switch it to Black Ops. And I find using dynamic as my response curve type is actually really useful as well. Dead zone plays a part in this as well, but dead zone's not that important. You don't need a special dead zone setting just to make your aim better. And that's actually very different for each person. If you guys do have a lot of controller stick drift, then you guys might want to increase your dead zone, but that could also lead to issues because it's going to make your reaction time much slower. But if your controller is just tweaking out anyway, then it probably doesn't matter. And I'm gonna let you guys in on a quick little secret. If you guys are using scopes in Warzone 2, I recommend you guys do not use them. If you guys watch my gameplays you guys know that I don't really use scopes unless it's a red dot scope that's very very low zoom uh, whenever you're actually using a lot of magnification in Warzone 2, you get way, way more recoil. This is not the case in Warzone 1, but for some reason, I guess the developers switched things around for Warzone 2. So now if you guys are using a VLK optic or like a four times or six times, you're going to get a lot more bounce. The gameplay you guys are watching right now, I used the M13 and the Cronin Squall, both with the exact same sight, and I dropped 30 kills. So yes, it's going to be a little bit harder to see players since you don't have the magnification, but you are going to get no recoil. So so it kind of compensates for that. And then of course, having iron sights is going to give you the least amount of recoil. Now, every time I make a video on my aim, someone has to go down in the comment section and say, oh, you're using a Cronus. Oh, you're just cheating. Guys, if you guys have ever actually played Warzone 2 for like more than an hour a day, you guys would know that most guns have absolutely no recoil and they're not really hard to control. If this was, you know, Apex Legends or Rainbow Six Siege, I would completely understand why you guys would think that, but there is no need for a Cronus. I don't ever use one. I usually play completely wireless on my PS4. I only use my cord if I'm just trying to hop on the PC for a little bit or if I'm trying to charge my controller. And also, I believe Ricochet Anti-Cheat just came out with something that did 
detects Cronuses now, so if I did have a Cronus, I probably would have been banned by now. But that's going to wrap up today's guide. If you guys did learn something new, and if you guys have any questions, make sure you guys comment them down below. I love making breakdown videos like this. If you guys do want more content, then you guys can leave suggestions as well. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, love, and understanding always.